there's a wealth of letters of advice written by the Rebbe on the subject of getting married, being married, staying married. These are very brief letters, so we'll just read them in a series without giving dates or places and so on. Let's start at the beginning. Looking to get married. The Rebbe writes in a letter, It pains me that you are giving me no good news concerning your establishing yourself for the future with a good shidduch, with a proper mate. And although it does say in the Gemara that finding the right shidduch is very difficult, but at the same time the Gemara also says, according to the camel is its load. And therefore, since it is your mitzvah to find the proper mate, you certainly have the ability and the guarantee that if you follow the instructions of the sages, that it is the man's obligation, it is the way of man to go searching for a wife, then when you find the right woman, you will find the goodness of your life that will be pleasing to you and to God. And I don't mean here to make you feel bad. I am talking about practical activity. And although I've written to you many times about this subject, I'm writing again, and I hope that you will not take offense because my intention is only for the good. In another letter, the main thing is putting in effort. You must invest effort, appropriate effort, in searching for a proper mate and finding the right person to marry. That which will be proper and good, both spiritually and physically. And as the Gemara says, it is the custom of the man to search for a wife. And I would be very appreciative and I thank you in advance for letting me know the good news, because if you try, you will surely succeed. Sim the Rebbe is saying that uh, people get very uncomfortable and discouraged by the fact that it takes effort and many attempts and many frustrations before you, in many instances, before you find the right person. And that seems to be indicating that there is nobody right and that it's not going to happen. And the Rebbe is saying that putting in the effort is all part of the process. It's not a waste of time and it's not only frustration. It is a necessary peeling away of layer after layer, person after person, until you find the right one. And that's because all good things and all holy things are hidden in this world. And in order to find them, you've got to go searching, like a person looking for something he has lost. Here's another letter. It pains me that you don't mention in your letter anything about getting married. And you know that it is my opinion that it's up to the man to go and find a wife. As someone who had lost something and goes searching for it. When a person loses something, he doesn't sit around in his house waiting and hoping that someone will bring it to him and say, I found something, maybe it's yours. Rather, he goes out from his home, from his house, and he goes searching, even though this is a distraction from other activities that he would deem more noble and more lofty. He goes searching for what he lost. And may God give you success in your endeavors. In response to your letter from the 7th of Shrat, and also your previous letter, what you write that you have not yet received a proper suggestion that is fitting for you in terms of a shidduch, in terms of getting married, I am very surprised. Since God does not request and expect of a person what he is incapable of doing, and when you devote yourself to a project and you do it with the proper energy and enthusiasm, then from above, God provides all that is necessary for the quest to be achieved and to find the right shidduch. And therefore, I'm quite certain that you are not going about it properly. You're not doing it like a person searching for what he had lost. And even when someone is suggested to you, when a name is mentioned to you, you approach it indifferently, without enthusiasm. 
you're almost like saying, all right, so what do you want me to do? I'll do it. But no more than that. And therefore, it is not surprising that if you approach the subject here below with that kind of indifference, that the results are not as they should be. There's no need to uh, belabor the point, and that is that it's not good for man to be alone, and as it is written in many places in Torah. So may it be God's will that from now on, meaning immediately now and onwards, immediately upon receiving this letter, you will do all that you need to do, and then you will surely succeed. And finally, this letter. The conclusion of your letter pains me, in which you say that there is nothing new, nothing happening, and I suspect that if in other things, in things that are negative and, and unacceptable, the Gemara says that if you repeat something often enough, you start to treat it as permissible, even though it, it is a violation, then certainly, how much more so in this subject, where your behavior has become a habit, and you go out and you pursue getting married at a minimal level, with the least amount of commitment, with the least amount of involvement, and this has become second nature. I hope that it isn't necessary to quote and to repeat to you the teachings of the sages who speak about this subject at great length. I'm sure you know them because they are well known. May it be God's will that since finding the right shidduch is in general a divine mystery and it is beyond nature, and as the sages say, that uh, for God to bring couples together is as difficult as the splitting of the sea. May it therefore be God's will that even if you don't do everything you have to do properly, God should help from above in a miraculous way and you should find your shidduch. There's always the problem or the question of do I first establish myself financially and then get married or do I first get married and then establish myself financially? Which comes first? Here's a letter from the Rebbe on that subject. Concerning his personal affairs, where you write that you uh, make uh, fine uh, resolutions, but they never come to be, and you don't know what it is you're supposed to do that you're not doing. Now, I've written to you many times that you need to act more enthusiastically with the proper enthusiasm in finding the proper shidduch appropriate for you. And this is true in all matters because it affects all of your life. As the sages say, whoever lives without a wife, a man living without a wife, lives without blessing. So all of your activities and, and your profession all depend on the blessing that comes from having a wife. So from now on, at least, you should try with the proper effort and with the proper enthusiasm through friends who know you and your family, and God will give you success. The blessings that a person has can be sufficient for himself as an individual because he is an individual. And then when he becomes a family, the blessings increase so that they are now appropriate for a group rather than for an individual because now it is necessary. Now there is reason for it. It's not a luxury anymore, and therefore it is given from above. But even beyond that, the Rebbe seems to be saying that in all of his activities, including his teaching and so on, it will all be more successful because success and blessing comes in the merit of a, of a wife. In response to your letter from the 5th of Teves, where you describe your situation, how in business and in different affairs of business, you are not finding any success. You're not yet finding any success. And you're wondering why that is. At the beginning of your letter, you actually give the answer yourself. And it seems that you haven't considered this. You haven't given this any thought. 
you begin your letter by saying that without any activity on your part, you received a letter from my father-in-law, the previous Rebbe, and you even quote the words of his letter in which he says, get yourself established with a good shidduch and then get involved in a business for which you have talent, for which you are gifted. And then in your letter, you immediately describe the business you got involved in and that you were not successful. It seems that my father-in-law, the Rebbe, is writing to you quite clearly, and that is that you should find the shidduch first and then get involved in business. But you did the opposite. You started with the business without making the proper preparation. And that is according to following the instruction of a tzaddik, of a nasi, in his letter. It isn't necessary to go finding proofs, etc. In the fact that the Rebbe connected these two issues, marriage and business, and in fact put the, the marriage before the business, is sufficient instruction and guidance. But we can also explain it according to the sages where they say that the blessing that a person receives comes by virtue of his wife. Now, although we find many people who are given success in their business without being married or in advance to their being married, but the blessing necessarily comes by virtue of the wife, either after marriage or before marriage, but it's in merit of the wife to be. And therefore, it is very clear that you should have followed the instructions of the Rebbe to first get established in marriage. And it's your responsibility to do so since it is the manner or the custom of man to go looking for a wife. And since the statements of a tzaddik are eternal, so his advice still stands, and he told you to get married first, so don't be confused and don't have your priorities confused, and then God will send you the right person and you will succeed. And then you will also have the blessings, as the sages say on the verse, Lohaniach Brocha El Besecha, to bring a blessing to your house. When there's a house, there's greater blessing. And it certainly isn't necessary to add and to emphasize that you should immediately begin to increase your study of Torah, both the revealed and the inner parts of Torah. And this will be a pipeway, this will be the channel through which additional blessings will be given to you. A word to parents. Another letter begins with, it pains me. The end of your letter pains me. And that is that you have no good news to share with me concerning the marriage or the engagement of your children. And it sounds like there are no good suggestions being offered and this pains me even more. Certainly to someone such as you, it is unnecessary to belabor the point, and that is what the sages say concerning the responsibility of parents, and particularly the father, the obligation and the mitzvah to marry off his daughter, so that he will be able to say, my daughter I have given to this man. The sages also say that if you try you certainly succeed. Yagaita Vilemotsasa Al Tamin. I tried, but I did not succeed, is not believable. May it be God's will that you should soon be able to share good news and all of the concealments and obstacles will be removed. Concerning the engagement of the marriage of a younger daughter before the older daughter, or a younger son before the older son. The Rebbe writes in many letters that there is no reason to delay the marriage of the younger sibling, but the older sibling's feelings must be taken into account, and therefore their permission must be requested and asked, and money should be set aside in advance for the wedding of the older sibling. And in one letter the Rebbe writes that the older daughter putting aside her ego and her feelings 
and giving wholehearted permission to the younger daughter to get married, that alone will bring her, the older daughter, success in her search, and she will find the right shidduch for herself in merit of this kindness. And therefore, the Rebbe says in this particular letter, don't rush with the marriage of the younger one, because between her engagement and her marriage, the older one will find her shidduch as well as a reward for her kindness. And then you will have a double blessing and a double simcha. Concerning going out, dating, getting to know each other, here's a very short letter on uh, the first meetings. Concerning your meeting and getting to know the nature of your future partner with all of the details, you should have very open and thorough conversation concerning all the details that will affect the conduct of the family concerning the fear of heaven, the uh, practice of mitzvahs, and so on. It goes without saying that you should both agree that the meeting should take place privately without a lot of people knowing about it. And then write to me all the details of your conversations, and I will respond to you and offer my opinion. May God bless you and give you success physically and spiritually. Another letter. In response to your letter of the 22nd of Shvat, in which you say that my head says that I will not find a more appropriate and better partner in life, but the heart says no. You don't write the reason. You don't say why your heart says no. Practically speaking, in all matters of shaduchim, of marriage, the heart takes a greater role and is more important. And therefore, you need to have at least the beginnings of an attraction to feel drawn to the person in your heart, or at least reason to believe that this will happen in the future. But if that does not exist and the heart says no, then you have to take that very seriously. What is not clear in your letter is what you write, that if the heart is not important, then I will need to wait. What do you mean by that? Do you mean to wait for other suggestions and go out with other people? Or do you mean to wait to see if there's a change in your feelings concerning this person whom you are presently seeing? Depending on what you mean by waiting, if you would clarify this, I would be able to answer you. May it be God's will, he who oversees all details of all of his creations, that he should guide you in the proper way and lead you towards the truth, which is good in a visible and revealed way. Concerning the actual decision. On what do we base a decision for marriage? The Rebbe writes, In response to your question concerning the shidduch and the proper mate for you, before you actually enter into the shidduch, you need to be absolutely confident that the home you will build together will be built on the basis of Torah and mitzvahs. And this means not only you but also your husband, your groom, take upon yourselves together with a firm and confident manner that you will fulfill the mitzvahs and there will be set times for the study of Torah. And this guarantee on your part has to be honest and sincere because all of your future bliss, the bliss of a Jewish man and woman, depend on this. And if you see all of this, and in addition there is a feeling, an attraction of the heart to this shidduch, then you should pursue it seriously, and it will be good and successful. It certainly isn't necessary to remind you that in marriage, 
which is the beginning of a new life of two people who become partners with each other and then become one in the creation of a house, children, it is absolutely necessary that you make a very firm resolution to establish your life on the basis that have stood by us through all of our history and do not underestimate the importance and the significance of this because the stronger the foundation is, the stronger the building will be. The Rebbe is saying that marriage is essentially a holy endeavor. A holy endeavor must be built, must be established on the foundation of holiness. And the foundation prior to the wedding itself is the resolution, the vision, to see your marriage as a setting in which Torah and mitzvahs and godliness and holiness are all played out. It's the stage in which mitzvahs can best be performed. And if you see your marriage as such, then there is a guarantee given from above that the marriage will bring to fulfillment and satisfaction and bliss, not only for the couple, but also for their children. Doubts. What about doubts? Deborah writes in a letter as follows. It pleased me to read in your letter that you've met a man who appeals to you and in whom you see many virtues. A man who fills the bill for what you have been looking for. And you are hopeful that you will find more and more virtues as you get to know him better. Now, it is correct, as you write, that in this matter, there also has to be a feeling, a positive attraction, and not only a rational, cerebral conclusion. And this is, of course, understandable, because you're building a complete building, and it must last forever. The, build, the house that you're going to build has to be a united house in all areas and all details, not only in the mind. On the other hand, it is not always easy to make a decision in such a matter and to balance the opinion of the mind versus the feelings of the heart. Because there are many times in which although it seems that this is only, that the attraction is only a mental one, Yet in truth, there is a great part, and possibly even the decisive part, in the decision is actually coming from a feeling and not from an opinion. And so my suggestion is that you meet more times, get together and meet more times, until you are able to determine for yourself that your attraction is not only mental but also emotional. In addition to that, if it is clear to you and you are certain that at this time you don't have any feeling and that it's only mental, it is therefore premature to make any conclusion or decisions about this. And even if there is some feeling, you should take some time apart, separate, and see what your heart tells you. And may it be God's will that you should succeed and in a good an auspicious hour, you should notify me of the good news. Another letter. Concerning your question about a shidduch, in which you say that even though you've met many times, you have no feeling, you're not attracted, you're not drawn to the person. In situations such as this, you need to wait with your decision, positive or negative, until you find a feeling either positive or negative. Sometimes the solution to help you clarify this is to get together more often or the opposite, to stop seeing each other for a while and see what the heart shows. And this depends on the nature of the people involved. In response to your letter of the 26th of Cheshvan, 
you write that you've known a certain man personally for many years, and now the question is whether you should marry him. And in spite of the fact that you know him for so long, you still haven't reached a conclusion or a decision. This being the case, and since marriage is permanent and for many, many years is desirable, that for a while you should not see each other. And this separation will bring to the surface whatever feelings there are in the heart, whether positive or negative. And the creator of the world should place in your heart the proper thoughts so that you will be able to decide for what is good for you materially and spiritually. Concerning the approval of the parents, in your letter in which you write about marrying a certain woman, in the ways of Torah, in the mitzvah of honoring parents, when it comes to Shaduchim, you should consult with them and ask their opinion and their approval. I, for my part, approve of the Shidduch, and I give you my blessing that it should be L'toiva u l'bracha. It should bring goodness and blessing, and you should succeed materially and spiritually. On the other hand, if parents do not approve, and you've taken their opinion into consideration, but you still are determined and desiring to marry a certain person, according to the code of Jewish law, you may proceed and you should proceed even without the parent's approval as long as the marriage is a mitzvah, it takes precedence over the honoring of parents. Concerning uh, gifts that are given after an engagement or on the occasion of an engagement, the Debra writes, for a number of reasons, it seems to me that the gifts that are given to the kala that are given to the bride before the wedding, the gift should not include a ring. And it would be a good idea to uh, speak about this, to publicize this in my name or not in my name, but as long as people will hear it and follow this advice. In another letter, the Debra writes, I take this occasion, I take advantage of this occasion, since there is a Jewish custom of buying a gift for the chasan upon an engagement, uh, holy books and so on, or as uh, is the custom here in, in, our, in our country that the bride's family buys a shas, a Talmud, a complete Talmud for the, uh, for the groom. We should also establish the habit or the custom that in a new home, in other words, in the home of a newly married couple, they should also bring as a gift a pushka, a tzedakah box, because tzedakah brings blessing. In another letter, it is a Jewish custom in many places to give gifts to the chassan, like a set of Talmud and so on, and to the kala you give other holy books, books that explain the laws and the mitzvahs that are performed by, by women particularly. It would be appropriate that these books should be in the language that the Kala understands and is comfortable with because this will guide her in establishing a Jewish home in a way that she understands in a way that is not difficult for her. And the more books, the better. The time between the engagement and the wedding. I am hopeful that Eber writes in a letter. I am hopeful that you will take advantage of the time to fill it with Torah and mitzvahs, both the revealed part of Torah and the inner part, the hidden part of Torah, with an improvement in the fulfillment of mitzvahs in general and in prayer particularly. As it appears from your letter, you have not yet begun to do these things, but the time before the wedding is such a precious time. You are preparing yourself and this time will influence how your life is going to be for a long time to come. 
and there's no need to elaborate on this. It is also certain that a person engaged and preparing to be married is given from above a special ability so that if you only want and you make the effort and you try, you will certainly succeed in all of the above. And I await good news in all of the above.